Hi everyone, I'm Hao Ran. Today I'm going to present our paper, DRUST, Language-Guided DSM with Fine Granularity, Full Transparency, and Ultra-Efficiency. About 30 years ago, DSM was a very hot topic, but it later lost its popularity because of the bad performance, which was mainly due to the low network speed in the early days. The good thing is that new networking technologies such as Infinity Band and CXL has made network a lot faster. Today, the network bandwidth is already approaching memory bandwidth. Therefore, people are interested again in leveraging those high-speed networks to build new DSM systems. But the performance is still unsatisfactory. As shown on the right, when running a typical data center application data frame on a cluster of eight nodes using those DSMs, there is a big performance slowdown compared to running it on a single machine with equivalent resources. Our analysis shows that it is primarily due to the overhead of maintaining memory coherence. Let's take a closer look at where this coherence problem comes from and why it imposes such a performance burden on DSM. Actually, although today's network is much faster, the latency for cross-server memory access is still much higher than local memory access. This difference necessitates the use of caching, which leads to the coherence issue. For example, a mutation in one server's cache is actually not visible to other servers. To address this issue, most existing DSM try to emulate the single machine hardware mechanism for maintaining coherence. But this approach can result in many network round trips in a single memory access, which can severely impact performance. Consider this example GAM. GAM is a state-of-the-art system that utilizes a directory-based method for maintaining coherence. This figure shows a simple example of memory access in GAM. Blue nodes A and Z here are some data blocks on server 0, and yellow node A represents a mutated cache copy on server 1. When server 2 is going to access data, GAM requires a complicated synchronization process to check the state of the data block invalidate any still cache copies, and transfer the data to the requesting server. Our profiling of GAM shows that for a single remote data access, synchronization operations can take 77% of the time. So reducing these synchronization operations could help significantly enhance performance. But how do we achieve this? In fact, those complicated synchronizations are just trying to maintain one property. We call it single writable copy, multiple readable copy invariant. It means that while multiple copies of data may exist for reading, only one writable copy can exist if data is being modified. As long as this invariant is maintained in the system, we can have a coherent DSM. Today's DSM all aim to uphold this invariant solely at the system level. They overlooked a very important application level semantics. Actually, Multi-threaded concurrent applications inherently follow a single writer, multiple reader model. At any time, a data object is either written by one thread or read by multiple threads. This pattern is important to applications' own correctness. Because concurrent writes by multiple threads could lead to undefined behaviors, so the application must use some methods to serialize the accesses to the data, maybe through logs or conditional variables or something else. You can see the application and the system are trying to maintain some similar properties. And this similarity gives us a unique opportunity to better solve this coherence problem. Our idea is that we should leverage the application semantics into, the design, into, the, uh, into maintaining that environment in system. But there are two big challenges in achieving this. First, the semantics is hidden in applications how to explicitly expose that to systems is challenging. Second, how to leverage this information to efficiently ma maintain coherence is also challenging. To address them, we find that the ownership model is an ideal tool to capture this semantics and transfer it into the system. And we designed a lightweight ownership-based coherence protocol to leverage this semantics for maintaining coherence. And our protocol eliminates the need for cross-server synchronizations. Let me first briefly introduce the ownership model. The ownership model is foundational to Rust programming. 
It offers many benefits like memory safety and concurrency correctness. It is basically a set of rules that the compiler checks at compile time. The concepts of ownership and borrowing are central to this model. And a very important aspect of borrowing is the single writer multiple reader pattern. I'll use a simple example to illustrate these concepts. On the left is a small piece of code, and on the right is a thread stack and a memory heap. For the ownership concept, in Rust, each value has a unique owner, and the value will be cleaned up when the owner goes out of scope. This rule prevents resource leaks and dangling pointers in Rust programs. For example, in the first two lines of code, we created two integer values in the heap and had two pointers pointing to them. Here, the box in the code means heap pointer type in Rust. These pointers A and B are the owners of those heap values. And objects can be accessed through the owner. Rust also allows accessing data without taking ownership of it through borrowing. Basically, programmers can create references from owner and use the reference to access the object. There are two types of borrows, immutable borrows and mutable borrows. Immutable borrow only allow for reading data through immutable references, and mutable borrow allows both data reading and writing. An important rule is that there can only exist one single mutable reference or multiple immutable references to the same value at the same time. This represents the single writer multiple reader pattern. For example, in the third statement, we create a mutable reference mute R to the value owned by B. And this type, access to B itself is restricted. And attempting to declare an immutable reference to the same value would trigger a compile time error. Finally, the last statement modifies the second heap value. And after this code block finishes, the mutable reference is dropped, and the access right goes back to the owner. OK, to summarize, in a Rust program, the ownership model ensures that there is either only one mutable reference or multiple immutable references to an object. It explicitly provides the exact single writer multiple reader semantics what, that we want. If we are accessing memory through a mutable reference, we know that this is the single writer. And if we are accessing through immutable references, we know they are those multiple readers. So it directly solves the first challenge. But there is a second challenge. As previously discussed, achieving coherence in a DSM requires the system to maintain the single writable copy and multiple readable copy invariant. The gap here is how to leverage the single writer multiple reader semantics to reduce the synchronization operations and efficiently maintain that invariant. DRust addresses this through an ownership based coherence protocol. But before talking about the protocol, let's first take a look at what unique information that semantics in Rust programs can provide. In fact, for any data, the ownership model in Rust explicitly divides the accesses into phases. In each phase, there are either multiple immutable references, and they can all read that data concurrently, or there is only one mutable reference that can write data. Immutable references can be created again after this mutable reference goes out of scope. This is actually very useful information. Because in a non-Rust program, accesses to data also have phases, but those pointers to data can exist all the time to read or write the data. This difference offers great opportunity for us. Remember, these references and pointers are actually just storing the memory address of the data. We can regard the address as some kind of unique identifiers. If we know the address, then we know which data to access. And similarly, in DSM, the address is also the identifier of the data, but the data can be on any server. DSMs usually employ a partitioned global addressing model. The global heap is partitioned across servers. Each data or object has a unique global address. If we know the global address of the data, we know which server it resides in. For example, address 1 is the global address of data on server 2, and there can be pointers to this data on any server. If the program accesses data on a different server, for example, through point zero on server zero, traditional DSMs would request the data from server two based on the address and store a cache copy on server zero. And future accesses to this data from server zero can look up the cache using the data's identifier, which is its global address, and directly access the local copy. 
You can see read accesses in DSM could create multiple copies on different servers. So for traditional DSMs to maintain that single writable copy invariant, the future write operation on one server must send messages to other servers to invalidate their cache copies. Then subsequent reads can know that all data is not valid and will get the latest version of the data. But with Rust's explicit single writer multiple reader semantics provided by the ownership model, after the data is being cached on different servers, the write operation through a mutual reference actually does not need to send messages to other servers to invalidate their cache copy. Instead, we can directly move the data to another location, which changes the data's global address. Remember, the global address is the unique identifier for the data. So after the mutation to the data, subsequent read accesses to new immutable references in the next phase will access the data using the new identifier, which means they will not access the old cache copy, but will request the new data. The coherence problem is then solved, and you can see this process doesn't have any cross-server synchronizations. And we can do this move operation in Rust programs because in Rust, when the data is being moved, only one mutable reference exists. To better illustrate this process, here I'm going to show a specific example about how DRust handles the memory access operations. In this example, we have an object A and its owner P. An immutable reference R2 is on a different server. Access to R2 in DRust will copy the object to server 2. And to prevent the creation of redundant copies on the same server, we have an assistant data structure, cache hash map. The key is the object's original global address, and the value is the local address on the current server. And with this hash map, memory accesses to new immutable references, like R3 here, do not need to create duplicate copies. It can use the object's original address as the index to look up the cache hash map and directly retrieve the cache copy at address 2. Suppose the reading phase finishes, program is going to write object A. In this case, Rust's ownership model guarantees that before having a mutable reference to object A, all immutable references must have gone out of scope. Otherwise, the program won't compile. When the program accesses object A through the mutable reference M, DRUST can directly move the object to a new address on server 0. After the write operations are done and the mutable reference goes out of scope, DRUST synchronously updates the owner of A to reflect the new address, address 3. And this step is crucial to ensure, to ensure the owner's correctness. But you can see, there are still copies of object A on server 2. But no worries, as previously said, moving object A to a new address has, has automatically invalidated the still copy uh, in server 2. Consider what happens when a new immutable reference is created. This new reference must point to the new address, address 3. When accessed through this new immutable reference, DRUST will look up the cache hash map using address 3 and the lookup will clearly fail. Therefore, DRUST fetches a fresh copy of object A to server 2, and that still copy will never be accessed again, which means the still copy is automatically invalidated. So this process upholds that single writable copy invariant, and a coherent DSM is achieved with no cross-server synchronizations. Here is the overall architecture of DRUST Based on the ownership-based coherence protocol, we built an efficient DSM framework on top of Rust programming language. Details about each component of DRUST can be found in our paper. We conducted our evaluation on a cluster of eight nodes. We run four different data center applications on DRUST. We compare DRUST with two modern DSM systems, GAM and GRAPA. They employ different approaches for maintaining memory coherence. DRUST achieved a two times speed up over GAM and a nine times speed up over GRAPA. OK, so basically, the central idea I want to show in my today's talk is that we should leverage application semantics into the design of systems. Traditionally, the design of many systems, including previous DSM systems, prioritizes generality 
and treat applications as black boxes. And application semantics always stay within user programs. This, this approach leads to systems missing a lot of optimization opportunities. But DRUST challenges this norm by integrating the single writer multiple reader semantics inherent in Rust applications into the design of underlying DSM systems. This integration is achieved through Rust's ownership model and enables DRUST library and runtime to effectively reduce coherence overhead. And looking forward, there is great potential to leverage various kinds of application semantics into many other systems using diverse techniques opening new avenues for system optimizations. Thank you all for listening, and any questions are welcome.